night, guys. All right, we got our first cold winter night there in the oasis of freedom here in the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization. Having a nice warm margarita. The little dog is curled up in front of a heater and uh, has no interest in doing this rant. I had actually totally just spaced out doing a uh, chronicle of the collapse here today on uh, whatever day it is. It is Tuesday, November 22nd, 2021. So, uh, guys, I am, I am trying to exercise restraint, but I can't let a couple of them go by without some sort of, uh, anyway. From NBC News, a little heartstring-tugging Thanksgiving story. I don't have food. Mother of six. Mother of six struggles to feed her family at Thanksgiving as prices soar. Hmm. I wonder why... A mother of six, a single mother of six, no less. Uh, it's that damn inflation. It's Joe Biden's fault, you know. Uh, it is Joe Biden's fault that this single mother of six uh, is struggling to feed her family. I got to put on my second pair of glasses just to, uh, yes, uh, Let's get to the, let's get to our, uh, our queen for a day. Oh, uh, let's just pick one here. Um, uh, okay. How about Cleveland area resident Latasha Lyle says she tries to make the idea of a vegetarian meal you know, for Thanksgiving, sound like an exciting culinary adventure for her six kids. The reality said, the reality, the single mother of six said, is that she cannot afford to buy meat. Quote, unfortunately, I am a single mom when I picked up a pack of chicken wings, it said $21 for 12 pieces. That's not a lot to feed myself and six kids. Even with SNAP benefits, the single mother of six said lately that she has sought assistance from food banks. Quote, I don't have food now as we speak. <sighs> La da da from Cleveland to Madagascar. I've already mentioned this, but uh, it has now made its way to the number two story on the planet. Madagascar on the break of the first famine caused by climate change. Madagascar is on the cusp of experiencing the first official famine clearly caused by climate change, according to officials with the United Nations. Yes, okay. Uh, we have to, this is the second biggest story on the planet. We have to do a little reality check. The famine in Madagascar, okay, it is not the first famine caused by uh, climate change. It is the probably, good lord, a uh, hundred thousandth famine by overshoot. Okay? Humans 
overshooting their ability to feed themselves. Uh, I don't need to go scroll down picture after picture after picture after picture after picture uh, uh, of these, uh, what are they talking about, a half million, mostly children, starving children. I, I mean, I, it, it, I, I, moving on, but we're going to move now for finally we can find a little bit of intelligent reporting. The number, that was the number two story on the planet. But finally, the number one story on planet Earth, according to Yahoo News, even more important than the single mother of six not being able to feed her by meat for her kids, and uh, bigger than the uh, famine in Madagascar. Uh, Oh, God, guys, I'm looking at this picture from a trail cam. Have you heard of these things called uh, ghost moose? This is actually, I think this is a white-tailed deer uh, covered in these ticks, like where their entire body is covered in these big, fat, blood-swollen ticks. I remember be, being a kid, we used to go to the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, down there on f our family vacations and the deer, you know, were tame and they would come up and the deer, their eyes, each one of their eyes would be ringed with these uh, big fat gray ticks. Uh, good God, and they had these bloody running sores on their noses from the deer flies and this is uh yeah and uh those were the good old days i, I mean good god uh if, if the pictures from madagascar aren't bad enough we have to show this but anyway getting off track the number one story on the planet makes my uh research easy the next great casualty of climate change could be global fishing stocks. Again, uh, it's a combination. I, you know, climate change is, is uh, important here, but the global fishing stocks are uh, in full-scale collapse if, if climate change was nowhere on the radar global fishing stocks because of humans overshooting their, you know, overshooting their ability to feed themselves. Uh, but anyway, this is looking at uh, how, a, how a basically miserable situation with, uh, with global fishing stocks is, is soon ready to hit the uh, the truly uh, horrible, we're going to go from the basically miserable to the truly horrible, take it away, Yahoo News, the next great casualty of climate change could be global fishing stocks. <clears throat> In a year that has seen the disastrous effects of climate change unfolding with frightening speed from drought and famine to heat domes, wildfires, and deadly flash flooding, another potential catastrophe has come into view. Depleted oxygen levels in the world's oceans and lakes that threaten marine life, can you say, uh, under a green sky. Uh, this is the prelude to the hydrogen sulfide story coming up in a few years. This is researcher Julie, researchers Julie Pullen and Natalie Goodkin in a, a piece published today in Scientific American, uh, quote, as ocean and atmospheric scientists focus on climate, we believe that oceanic oxygen levels 
are the next big casualty of global warming. I'll have to go read that rest of that story in Scientific American. In part due to the effects of rising global temperatures, growing portions of the oceans have lost 10 to 40 percent of their oxygen, and that figure is forecast to continue growing due to climate change. Rising water temperatures and depleted oxygen, which pollution and nutrient runoff also make worse, has been blamed for mass die-offs of fish this year in states including Florida, California, Oregon, Montana, which is not even uh, on the ocean, Louisiana, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ma which is pretty much not on the ocean, Missouri, not on the ocean, Washington, Idaho, not on the ocean, and Minnesota, not on the ocean. While climate change is not the only cause for the fish kills, it is, researchers say, a contributing factor. And with each passing year, it's going to be a bigger contributing factor. This is uh, back to that uh, study in Scientific American. <clears throat> Quote, as the amount of CO2 increases in the atmosphere, not only does it warm the air by trapping radiation, it warms water. The interplay between the oceans and the atmosphere is complex and interwoven, but simply oceans have taken up about 90% of the excess heat created by climate change, well, of, of course, so far. When a heat dome covered much of the Pacific Northwest this summer, rising temperatures in streams and rivers resulted in mass die-offs of salmon and trout. An estimated one billion marine animals along the coast of Canada were also killed as a result of that heat wave. That grim reality has brought the urgency of global warming home. For even conservative residents of his home state, Senator Jeff Markey of Oregon uh, said earlier this month, uh, quote, 15 years ago in rural parts of the state of, of Oregon, people would say, oh, this is just some Ivy League invention, uh, talking about climate change. Today, those same constituents, many of whom are fishermen, understand that, quote, the trout streams were warmer and smaller, and it affects them. Climate change, Pullen and Goodkin wrote, is upsetting the delicate balance that helps provide abundant marine life. So I guess this is just a summary of this story in Scientific American. Quote, bodies of water can absorb CO2 and oxygen, but only to a temperature-dependent limit. Gas solubility decreases with warming temperatures. That is, warmer water holds less oxygen. This decrease in oxygen content coupled with a large-scale die-off of oxygen-generating phytoplankton resulting not just from climate change, but from plastic pollution and industrial runoff compromises ecosystems, asphyxiating marine life, and leading to further die-offs, they wrote. With roughly three billion people worldwide who depend on fishing to make their living sus sustaining oxygen levels in the world's oceans and lakes is certain to be just one more challenge in the era of climate change. Quoting the authors of that study one more time, 
roughly 40% of the world depends on the ocean for their livelihoods. If we do not stop marine life from oxygen starvation, we propagate a further travesty on ourselves. Yes, we do. It's all about the humans. Yep, all about the humans. Uh, the oceans are dying, and it's all about the humans. I get so damn sick of it, but anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap up this short chronicle of the collapse, head back to my trailer and huddle in front of a heater. I have a, uh, a goose down vest and an Alaska parka on here in the Sunshine State in November. I guess the Old Farmer's Almanac is uh, forecasting the coldest winter in uh, how many decades? Anyway, get out there and enjoy the coldest winter in how many decades before you suffocate? Bye, guys. <clears throat>